welcome back to my studio. I am just about finishing up on this painting of Deer Valley, Utah, and my collector, we had originally talked about doing grapes up here, and as I got the other day, uh, my collector said, would it be possible to possibly change those grapes to something else? And I gave her a couple of suggestions, and I said, no problem. And uh, let's, uh, what about, what about wisteria? It, the purple would go with the purple chairs and everything, and she loved that idea. So I am going to change this, the grapes, to wisteria. Now I've still got my sky color. I had mixed quite a bit. This is cobalt blue plus, plus white. And I'm just going to go back, and my grapes are dry now, so I'm kind of going to thin them up a little bit because the wisteria blossoms are not quite as bulky as the grapes are. And since I already have my sky color, I can just come back and, and work around these. Again, this is cobalt blue plus white, or mostly white plus a little bit of cobalt blue, I guess is really the proper way to say it. Now, I've got some texture there from the grapes, so I can take my painting knife and just very carefully scrape that off. So I don't want that great, the great texture in there. So I can just scrape that off. That makes that surface smooth again. And we won't even, when we're done, we'll do another with grapes there. I'm going to go ahead and do these over here, scrape these off. So where they come down in the sky, I want that to be a little bit smoother. Come back and just paint over that area. And this will make it easier too, painting my wisteria. I like to paint wet into wet so those blossoms will come down into that wet. There's a little texture there, but what's there will be covered over with my uh, wisteria blossoms. And then as I go down, the sky gets a little lighter, and this is thalo blue plus white. That's a little bit too white, too much white in that one. I didn't save, I ran out of my middle tone, so I have to mix a little bit more. Again, that's thalo blue plus white. I guess I should say white plus thalo blue because white is the predominant color in that mixture. Now, is this too dark? No, I think that's just right. Yeah, there we go. Using this double primary palette that Jack developed, is uh, it's very easy to remix colors and just keep those color mixtures in come back and match. But I try to, when I'm like painting my sky and stuff like that, I try to mix enough color that I don't have to worry about mixing anymore. But that was just one of those instances I did. I needed to and I could come back and match that color. And here I've got my, again, my white plus the cobalt blue. Now, I want to keep my little squiggly vines and stuff. The wisteria has the same sort of squiggles and wiggles in the, the vines that the grapes do. So it's very easy to make this transition. There is still a little texture remaining there, but that's not going to be a problem because the wisteria blossoms are going to come off of that. Get those painted out. The ones in the leaves and up over the trellis I'm not worried about because I can come back in with my browns and work around that. It's really the ones in the sky that, that with that light behind them, you really see the, the transition there. So there we go, there's that. Now I have a little bit of a little grapes that came down into this. top of my distant hills here, and that's a mixture of mud plus ultramarine blue. Again, I can just 
to add just a touch more blue into that. I don't have quite the right. I also have to come back and mix that color. And again, it's my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson, plus more ultramarine blue, plus white. Just take a little bit of my sky color and soften this brush stroke right here. That's a little bit bright. There we go. Now I can start making my wisteria blossoms. Clean out my brush real well. I wipe it with tissue. Now this is a mixture of dioxanine purple plus white. And I can just make these blossoms. Even though this is a big brush, this is called a bright brush, it has a square tip, I can turn it and use the edge, the corner, to make those small little brush strokes. I bring also some brush strokes of ultramarine blue plus white into those blossoms. I'll add one up here, another one over here. And I can come back in in those places and, and put my colors in my beam. And again, I have saved that color. So I can just then come back in and paint in between these. So that gets rid of the, the grape. So you wouldn't even know there was a grape blossom there. I love wisteria. They're just such a Wispy, wispy pretty little vine. Bring these down here where the grapes were. We'll have several in here. I'm not going to answer that. When I'm painting, I don't take a break when the phone rings. It's, most of the time, it's somebody trying to sell something anyway. But it's just too interruptive. If it's important, they'll leave a message and I can call them back. But I just love how these blossoms trail down. I'm going to put a third one in there. One. And this, even though we have the fall foliage out here and wisteria bloom in the springtime, that's the joy of, of being an artist and painting, is we can make the world as we want it to be. We can have Flowers bloom at any time of the year. If it's out of season, who cares? You know, we're the, we're the boss of what goes on the canvas. And if we want to have wisteria blooming in the fall with fall foliage, hey, we can do that. So that's, that's one of the, just the wonderful things about being an artist is we can, we can make the world to be as we want it to be. So I just come back in and, and on my beam and, and fill it, you know, come back and clean up some of those areas around where there were grapes. 
But this is how I will change the wisteria, the grapes to wisteria on this painting. I really appreciate you watching today, and please come back and see more. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also visit my blog. My link is in the description below. And on the blog I show the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting. I know a lot of times people will email me in, in the comments section and say, hey, where's the rest of this painting? I'd like to see how it turned out. Just go to my blog. And again, that link is in the description below. You can subscribe to my blog to, so that you will get a notification every time I post a blog. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I thank you so much, and you have a wonderful, wonderful day.